So uh, let, let us uh, get started. Um, so first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Mikhail uh, Davidov. Um, I uh, moved to uh, United States some um, uh, six years ago, but uh, all my career is uh, in the field of um, quality assurance and quality engineering. Uh, so I uh, worked in uh, very many projects for different companies, uh, both in, in consultancies and uh, directly. Uh, and uh, today uh, I will try to reflect uh, on my experience uh, to reflect on how industry of uh, quality uh, assurance and quality engineering changed in those years uh, of uh, my career and uh, what it means uh, to uh, how you can still uh, stay on the top of it and uh, how to achieve excellence in uh, this. Uh, so um, what uh, we will be uh, discussing uh, today and how uh, I will uh, put this talk. So our first, um, I will, uh, we will have a quick uh, history outlook. Uh, we will talk uh, how about uh, how changes in software development methodologies uh, change to their uh, profession of uh, quality uh, assurance uh, specialists, uh, how their uh, landscape of uh, quality assurance changes in uh, those uh, that time. Uh, and this will uh, put us uh, to the next uh, part. Uh, so what is software uh, development engineering test uh, profession uh, what uh, hats uh, do uh, SDT uh, wear, and uh, then uh, there we um, will uh, see uh, how it works in practice in uh, for case uh, studies uh, from uh, real life, and we see we will see uh, how different. Uh, the role of uh, software development engineer in test in the project may be, and uh, how different outcomes may be, depending on uh, how uh, quality engineering uh, is set up in this particular project and uh, some other uh, inputs. And finally, uh, we will talk about uh, the SDT career, so how you can become software development engineer in test and what does this mean uh, to be uh, good at it? Uh, so uh, let us start from uh, the, uh, a bit of history. I think uh, all of you uh, know what uh, waterfall is, uh, but here uh, let's talk a little bit uh, on uh, what uh, did it mean uh, for uh, quality uh, assurance. So. Uh, well, waterfall, you have five distinct, uh, distinctive uh, st st stages of your phases uh, of your software development life cycle. Uh, they are gated in the end of the each phase. You have uh, particular deliverables, for instance, uh, in the end of the development phase, you have the alpha version uh, that you can give to the testing team to start testing in the and in the uh, end of requirement analysis phase, you have a functional specification that you uh, can uh, provide to the architect to start uh, doing the uh, design. Uh, so the main features of uh, the waterfall is the very long release cycle. So it's usually years. Uh, teams are usually very big. Uh, the emphasis uh, here is on the processes, on the planning, uh, and on the documentation. Yeah, an important thing is that in the each of those phases, you will have uh, different specialists uh, mm, kind of doing the main part of uh, the work. For instance, during requirement analysis, it's very, it's nothing to do, neither for testers nor for developers. Uh, at a solely uh, the work of functional uh, analyst. 
in the development phase, the function on an Alice is likely uh, already be working on the different projects because it's not too much uh, to do for them uh, here, and they may be simply not available. And this is why uh, there is so so much emphasis on uh, uh, documentation here. Uh, so. Uh, what it means uh, for uh, quality assurance. Uh, so first of all, uh, in the waterfall, you usually have independent uh, QA team. Uh, and uh, it is also kind of specialized. It. You have uh, functional testers, manual testers, you have test designers, you have test analysts, you uh, usually have uh, test automation engineers and uh, performance testers. But most of all, you have a quality assurance manager uh, who is on par with uh, a project manager. Uh, and what the, all the team is doing is it's mostly in charge of legwork testing. And the main part of the work starts when the product is ready for testing. Before that, yeah, they kind of review the may review the functional and uh, the functional specification for testability, maybe. Uh, but this is mostly all that they, how they impact the quality of the product uh, before uh, it uh, actually ready uh, for testing. And what does it mean? It means that basically we are trying to test quality out because we cannot affect as a as a QA team, we cannot affect uh, how product is built, how it is designed. Uh, we can only uh, try to find bugs and make uh, developers fix them but you know when you do that and the your quality of your product uh, and design is not good when you are fixing one block there are 10 more uh appears so uh <laughs> obviously the quality is not great uh it is extremely hard to uh, make any changes after the requirements analysis phase is finished and when you do that it usually affects uh quality and uh, this uh, approach have very high uh, overhead. And mostly this is because uh, the teams, uh, they, the only way they communicate, uh, like again, the functional analyst, uh, developers, architects, most the, the main way they communicate is through documents. Well, it's not the most efficient way uh, for sure, especially when you uh, don't uh, have a direct access to uh, those people is, is, which is uh, often the case. So uh, in the beginning of 2000, it was already uh, pretty evident that something need to uh, change. But uh, m most important is that uh, all the conditions for those changes, all the prerequisites were uh, already there uh, in terms of the new approaches, in terms of the new tools. So uh, from the business perspective, uh, the business uh, simply couldn't wait years uh, between uh, uh, you have a requirements and uh, when uh, the product is uh, released uh, to the market because there, those requirements will get uh, outdated and we will uh, deliver the product that is not competitive. Uh, and also remember this is time uh, 2000, it's uh, the time of the uh, internet boom uh there are start a lot of startups and those are small ambitious teams who are ready to deliver much faster and much better quality uh than the grants used to and uh, so even for uh, the established it organization they really uh, feel uh the competition and they feel that they need uh, to start changing something uh, so what are, uh, and developers themselves felt like they can do much better uh, than uh, Waterfall. And the most important uh, things here is uh, the new approaches to the uh, software design, uh, the object-oriented programming design patterns. But in my opinion, in my personal opinion, the the way the software is built, uh, like t using uh, test driven development, unit testing and refactoring so that uh, this actually enables you uh, to make changes in uh, your software and uh, uh, prevent it to become legacy 
uh, to maintain uh, the constant accord quality, even though the requirements uh, can change. But also very important that there are uh, a lot of uh, new tools uh, enable developers to maintain a high quality standards. I'm talking here about IDEs, unit testing frameworks, uh, version control system, actually, uh, you, you name it. Uh, again, the, the code review uh, that was always mentioned in any bo many books, but never used too much in practice. Finally, we had uh, good enough uh, systems uh, to do that, and developers start incorporating it in uh, their work, and they change it uh, a lot as well. Uh, so uh, what are uh, the main uh, um, changes uh, in Agile comparing to a waterfall. So teams are smaller, um, releases are very fast. Uh, so from the change to the production, it is from anywhere from one day to maybe two, three weeks. A month, very rare, it's not too Agile. So average is two, two weeks. Uh, and the teams are smaller and they uh, communicate with uh, the team members communicate with each other directly, not through uh, the uh, formal uh, documentation as in the waterfall. But also because you have less documentation, but you still need to have a team on the same page with what, what are the requirements. Uh, there is new approaches like code as documentation and the test specification or as documentation for think of BDD for instance. Uh, and uh, also you have much less specialization. Uh, I mean, what uh, roles you have in Scrum for instance, you have a team member, you have a product owner, uh, you have Scrum master, and well, maybe also the, you have a tech lead and this is uh, this is it. Where is functional analyst? Where is a uh, key manager? Uh, where is uh, a lot of other professions that used to, to have, well, they are, they are gone. Um, the processes are much more flexible because the uh, main emphasis in the, on the improvements. So you are trying to uh, improve your processes constantly and it just means that they are flexible. They are uh, something that you are changing all the time is uh, the team, mm, the product changes, here yeah, the team changes. Uh, in terms of quality, uh, the main thing that changes is uh, usually coined as a uh, shift left. So what does it mean? It means that a while uh, in a traditional uh, waterfall approach, the testing starts when the product is ready. Uh, and the main force in terms of quality is uh, stars in the same time before, okay, you are preparing the uh, test documentation, preparing test cases, test plans, all this kind of stuff, but you are not actually impacting the uh, product quality in any way uh, by that time. Uh, and here we start writing tests even before uh, development starts, and those are not tests for testers. Those are actually our requirements those are the inputs for our design because the unit tests uh, in the TDD is what shapes uh, the uh, design of your application, what uh, make it uh, testable, uh, what make it more robust, what uh, help you to reflect what are the requirements and how your system uh, will be uh, working. Uh, so the motto of uh, shift left is test early, test often and both are very important. If we're talking about test early, it is, uh, we're thinking about TDD, BDD, ATDD. When we first uh, write a test specification or unit test, and then uh, we, develop, we design our system, implement our uh, uh, stories, uh, our changes accordingly. Uh, if we're talking about test often, we're thinking about CI/CD systems, so the pipelines, uh, the quality gates, uh, et cetera. But also we're thinking about the new uh, ways uh, to deploy our environments, 
uh, like uh, in the cloud, for instance, or containers. Uh, and also, uh, obviously, all those uh, kinds of testing is, I mean, you need to have a software engineer doing them. The unit testing is always developers. Integration testing, well, uh, it need it doesn't necessarily have to be a featured developer, but it should be a software engineer. But we will talk about it a little bit uh, later. So uh, one of the uh, great visualization of the shift left approach is called the test, test parameter metaphor. Uh, it's very uh, common, I think all of you uh, know about it, but uh, let me quickly uh, mention. So majority in this metaphor, we're saying that the majority of your tests should be lower level tests, like unit tests are, and a little bit less integration tests, and only on the top you have five to 10% of end-to-end -end tests. So why is that? Uh, well, because uh, unit tests are written by developers, they are a part of development process uh, if you're using TDD, uh, but also it allows you to test very often because they are very fast. Uh, it, they allow you to detect uh, the bugs and locate what needs to be changed uh, very uh, efficiently as well, especially if you are good at uh, reporting is your, in your unit test, which is important. Uh, so, but the, the service at an API level uh, test will allow you to see how uh, several components interact with each other, but all of this doesn't have any immediate business value and business relevance, because even if all your functions work correctly, all your components work correctly, but they are unable to behave like a system, uh, consistently interact with each other and uh, do what user actually need the system to do, uh, then it is all for nothing. Uh, so end-to-end uh, -end tests are still extremely important as well as some manual testing like exploratory. Uh, so apart from shift left, there is a complementary approach called uh, shift right, which means that we not only start uh, testing uh, earlier in the release uh, cycle, but also later in the release cycle after the product is already delivered, uh, because now uh, we have a continuous delivery. Now, uh, oftentimes uh, you have uh, deployments to production almost every day uh, or even uh, several times a day. Um, so it is extremely important to have a very fast feedback loop to understand uh, how users are using your product. Are there a box? What features they prefer, or like, don't like, where you have issues with UX, uh, etc. So approaches uh, here uh, we can mention is dog fooding uh, when uh, your employees are using, in your companies, using your own product for in their work. Uh, it's especially good if with a huge companies such as Google, for instance. I mean, there is no way uh, in the Google you cannot uh, use uh, their uh, Google Mail, uh, well, you name it. All the Google products are extensively uh, used in Google, obviously. The same uh, with uh, Facebook, uh, etc. With their uh, niche companies, it may be a little bit more challenging. Uh, then a b uh, testing feature toggle can rebuild this is all about the same thing that, so you have some users that are using the mainstream version of your product the stable version and some users who are using it who are trying out the innovative features they may even not even know uh, that uh, they have something different from what the others have or they may very well know in a uh, case of uh, can rebuilds uh, but anyway, uh, you are able to introduce new features uh, without endangering your entire uh, user base. Uh, so beta testing is also uh, about allowing users to uh, test your product. 
chaos engineering very interesting thing when you are uh, introducing some instability uh, to your production environment and the test environment so that uh, your developers have to write application in the in the way that uh, it is resilient to uh, such instability for instance you can uh, randomly uh, reboot uh, some of your servers uh, servers uh, or uh, kind of remove connectivity between uh, some of the comp uh, components in the system, et, et cetera. And also it's extremely important to constantly monitor what's going on in production and also to monitor the statistics that you can uh, gather from your users. Uh, this is also uh, help you to react very fast on anything uh, that happens to your uh, product on production and uh, because of again you have very fast cycle de deployment you can uh, release the, your fixes uh, in the same day uh, this greatly uh, kind of diminishes the importance of individual bugs uh, on uh, production okay so what all this mean for uh, us for quality assurance uh, specialists well, uh, first of all, it means that uh, no, it's much less independent testing out there. And if we're talking about independent testing, well, we're probably t talking about better testing, uh, about users doing testing, or maybe crowd testing, but not about the QA, uh, dedicated QA organizations doing it. Well, sometimes, but most of the organizations don't have QA, a dedicated QA uh, department nowadays. Uh, and QA specialists are embedded in uh, the teams directly. So they report to uh, the tech lead or the pro, the maybe, uh, I mean, they are part of the scrum team. This is what they are. Uh, you may have a quality assurance manager, but it means kind of double subordination, double reporting. It doesn't look work very well. There is no place to for QA managers anymore. Uh, no specialization for testers. You cannot be just a manual tester or just automated tester. You when you have a um, team of ten people and maybe one or two QA uh, persons there they need to do every, everything, starting from the test design and uh, to the test automation, et cetera. Um, and the iterations are very small, but you have to do everything you used to do in kind of months and years in the, in the waterfall. And testers actually have a very tough time trying to fit uh, into those uh, small, all, all those activities in uh, their iterations. And uh, well, we already mentioned uh, code as documentation, uh, specification as documentation. So the team basically uh, speaks programming languages. Uh, they don't so if you as a QA specialist cannot read code, I mean, you cannot efficiently interact with the other uh, team members. If, uh, and also a big part of your work will be uh, setting up tools like CI, CD, environments, et cetera. So you should be efficient add that as well. Just uh, test design skills are definitely not enough. So uh, does it all uh, the above mean that uh, now all the testing should be performed uh, by developers? Well, in some sense, uh, you see the most of the tests as we saw uh, above are automated tests. And after meta tests are code, the code is written by software engineers. Uh, 
and uh, many of those tests are anyway need to be written by developers such as unit tests. The product documentation is code and uh, the tests as a product documentation are, is code as well. Uh, and most of the testing now shifted from black box uh, as uh, in the waterfall to the white box. And uh, to do the white box testing, you need to understand very deeply how your application works and who by the, uh, by, by the feature developers know that best. Uh, and overall, uh, developers in the agile team feel increasingly uneasy about uh, testers because I mean, you, the team always have a feeling that, okay, we're always late uh, with our features. We can uh, meet the definition of done because automated tests are not ready or something like that. Okay, maybe if we start doing it, it will be faster, who knows? Uh, but from the other hand, well, really, people are usually pretty bad at testing what they uh, develop themselves of their own work. You need somebody else uh, with a fresh eye and not that much interested in uh, having this finished as soon as possible as you uh, to examine your uh, work. Um, also, uh, if writing unit tests directly contribute to your code quality because it is a part of your development process, uh, it's not that obvious uh, with other um, types of testing such as uh, integration testing and especially ANTRAM testing. It does, it, it's not for the developer, for the developer, it's not uh, immediately part, uh, felt like a part of uh, the development uh, process natu naturally, but it is very time, time consuming it is something, uh, something that actually uh, ha is making you to switch, making you to uh, do something out of your comfort zone. And you cannot be the developer, cannot be expert in all the uh, areas. And UI test automation, test design, the, it's not the area of expertise of developers. And I'm not sure it should be because they have already enough on their plate uh, to deal with. So, uh, yeah, as we see, the tester in Agile probably should be a software engineer. But should, uh, should it be the same uh, software engineer who is writing their feature code? Well, not necessary. Uh, developers do need help with testing. They do need it. And uh, here, we are coming to this uh, new profession of software development engineering test or software engineering test. Uh, in the recent years, it's, uh, uh, you may uh, hear about dev test ops. Frankly, maybe I'm too old fashioned, but I don't see much difference between the two. Uh, in my view, it's uh, more or less uh, the same. So, uh, what are the uh, different uh, things uh, that SDT uh, is doing? Well, maybe you can say that it is easier to say what they are not doing. Um, well, for me, it's I don't. For me, it's not because I don't know what they are not doing. They are doing pretty much everything. So uh, they are helping team understand how to do the testing right. Uh, they are setting up the environments. They are uh, creating their frameworks for uh, developers uh, to use so that they can write other tests. Uh, they are helping Scrum Master uh, to uh, set up uh, their processes around uh, quality engineering. Uh, for instance, uh, to make sure that you have meaningful definition of done that includes everything that it needs to include. Uh, so, yeah, it's quite many hats out there, right? Um, and uh, now it brings us to the next uh, uh, section of uh, this uh, presentation, the case studies. Uh, we will uh, start 
uh, we as uh, this uh, pretty small actually a project and very agile one, but in a really huge company. Uh, the, this company is one of the pioneers and uh, leaders in agile. I mean, everybody heard about it. It's more or less the synonym for the modern internet. Uh, and uh, but the system is pretty small for uh, this company. It's uh, internal ticketing system. This organization, this company have a lot of departments and all those departments have some workflows that need to be automated, uh, because especially operations uh, departments. And each of those uh, uh, teams, they all have their own workflows, own uh, ticket types, uh, so basically you have, you have 100 teams, uh, 100 ticket types and 100, uh, variations of a user interface, one for each ticket types as well as workflows. So from the test automation perspective, from UI automation perspective, this is pretty interesting. Uh, by the time I, uh, came there, uh, this was already the legacy project, but they'd never have, uh, their own SAT. And uh, the main problem they uh, had by that time is uh, not even that they don't, didn't have a UI test, but uh, that uh, if we're talking about uh, shift left and test early, test often. Well, test early, yes, but test often not because they didn't have the test as a part of this ECI CD. As a result, uh, many, many tests were simply outdated and they were not relevant anymore. They were not working. So the first three months, what I was, uh, my main job was to uh, make sure that the tests can be used in uh, CICD in the pipeline, that they can be used as a inequality gate and to ensure that they need to be not flaky. Uh, and also you need to be able to measure uh, the coverage, uh, the, the, uh, the code uh, coverage. And also this organization uh, have their own uh, quality standards. Uh, uh, so how to say if uh, the team is doing good in terms of quality engineering, there are particular standards, there are even certifications. You need to uh, measure a particular uh, metrics and uh, submit them uh, to relevant systems that will calculate your uh, quality score. And I also integrated that uh, as well. Uh, so in three months, uh, we had the majority of unit tests uh, working in the CICD and used uh, in a quality gate. In six months, uh, there were also uh, smoke uh, UI and API tests uh, that uh, were uh, covering the most uh, basic and important scenarios. And uh, by that time, it was mostly implemented by myself. Uh, but uh, the, the, the next big task was to uh, create uh, such a user uh, UI automation framework that it can be very easily, almost automatically uh, be used by developers. So uh, it will be naturally part of the uh, development process. And in 12 months, we have exactly that and developers uh, started writing tests every time uh, they were introducing the new UI. Uh, and uh, then I uh, found myself in the position when I simply, as an SAT, didn't have enough work to do. And I started doing the feature development because there was no much uh, there else that uh, teams needed. So what are the takes away from this uh, case study? When the agile do is done correctly, if the team is agile, team owns the quality, quality. Teams is interested in, you don't have to be a quality cop. You don't have to uh, push people all the time. They know what they are doing and they are uh, responsible uh, for the quality they uh, fill it. So after you set everything up, there is no much work for you anymore. The team can do it on, your, uh, on their own pretty well. So the role of SAT here is to set up infrastructure, to, uh, to write developer 
uh, to develop uh, frameworks to set up uh, the processes to help set up the processes to coach a little bit in uh, writing UI tests, maybe API tests, uh, but it's not to be an any of uh, QA in any of the team. Um, so this is pretty opposite case study. Uh, the next one, a uh, huge fintech organization and pretty interesting idea of a project. So they had a monolith, a monolith application, uh, legacy, seven years old, pretty uh, expensive to maintain uh, and uh, with a lot of production defects uh, coming every time because uh, no, much, no, no enough tests and a very complex configuration and the teams change it many times. So nobody really understand how the system works. So they decided that they need a new application. Uh, and they decided that they want to uh, use the microservices uh, to uh, drive it. Uh, from the uh, QA perspective, uh, they had a separate uh, a department, uh, SQE department in, uh, char in charge. Uh, and I was uh, actually a uh, software engineering test embedded in this team on behalf of this uh, department. And actually there was two of us, uh, me and my colleague uh, uh, test uh, engineering team was really huge. So in six months we have implemented the BDD uh, UI and API frameworks. We implemented with a uh, system used for uh, scaled agile uh, framework uh, for, for safe uh, called Rally, uh, so that automatically when you run tests, you update uh, the test execution in Rally and you can import uh, tests to test from Cucumber uh, to Rally uh, directly. Oh no, it was GBHave, uh, doesn't matter. Um, so we used all the tools that uh, SQE uh, organization had to offer. Uh, we have built pretty robust framework that uh, was really easy to analyze results and we had a document that the developers start using it. Uh, we implemented quality gates based on the sonar cube uh, and uh, coverage and uh, uh, tests are passing obviously. Uh, we certified this uh, as a level three uh, which is pretty high. We, the product owners uh, together with the team were writing the user stories and acceptance criteria in the Gherkin format so that it can, can be directly used for testing. So was it a complete success? Well, not exactly. The project gone through several organizations. Uh, many companies were thrown away. Architecture was severely reworked. Uh, after one year, uh, they decided that they don't need most of the testers and that the team will start uh, doing testing themselves, which is pretty good. Uh, so they have one SAT and 40 developers who were writing tests, but closer to production date, they introduced the uh, test team. This is all good, uh, but uh, well, initially it was planned to finish this in kind of one and a half years or maybe two actually in three years they have only very small part of this system on production uh, and there is still a lot to be done uh, but the processes in frameworks that we introduced are still in, are still uh, in use maybe in some uh, different way so what are the takes away here quality is necessary but it's not sufficient for the process success. If you have problems uh, with uh, the requirements, with the idea of your project, if it simply doesn't work and uh, using a big boom approach to a uh, big bang approach to kind of write the complete replacement of the application that is currently in production and it also being actively developed, while well, it's pretty ambitious, isn't it? Uh, and the architecture team for whom the, it was the first uh, uh, microservices uh, project. So there are things that quality uh, team 
have very little to offer. Uh, one other important takeaway was uh, that we were trying uh, to introduce tests as early as possible. But uh, when we were doing it, the project was simply kind of a prototype rather than, uh, than MVP. It was many components were uh, l later thrown away. And having your uh, tests, especially UI tests, only slow down developer. So one main, uh, so important takeaway from here, don't start writing UI tests until you're pretty sure that uh, this component is here to stay and UI is here to stay. Uh, the other takeaway is, well, if you're doing your job uh, well in terms of frameworks, in terms of setting up processes, it can outlive easily the individual components or even the projects it was initially designed for. It is a wise investment, it works. So you can be uh, safe about that. Uh, the next interesting uh, case study is um, also FinTech organization, uh, the different project, uh, digital payments, uh, customer facing application uh, created from scratch, uh, again, microservices, uh, more than 100 people, eight Scrum teams uh, distributed. Uh, and one Scrum team was completely devoted to uh, their quality engineering. They were not doing anywhere, anything else. So what they, uh, were they doing? Uh, or what we, were we doing? Uh, so we developed and enforced standards on uh, uh, testing their definition of DIAM, the uh, style guidelines, the guidelines for writing tests. Uh, so how we measure test coverage, uh, what are the required test coverage to for, for you to be able to uh, merge your changes, etc. We were reviewing all the application MRs, all the application code for testability, for test coverage, for performance with code quality standards, but also we were searching for uh, bugs. Uh, we were signing off the user stories uh, because, again, we were uh, doing those uh, code reviews. And um, we were implementing test frameworks uh, and uh, wrote uh, sample tests using the, those frameworks for all the test types and for all the teams. And we uh, set up tools and infrastructure. The product was successfully launched to production uh, a little bit later than anticipated, but well, with one and a half years of development, uh, the delay of three months, I think it's uh, average for the industry. It's pretty good, I would say. Uh, QAT, uh, quality engineering team successfully launched and handed over to develop, uh, to dev teams all their uh, frameworks for UI, API, contract, load testing, and uh, also they developed an uh, uh, in-house application for uh, quality metrics called analysis called quality dashboards. So every team, every Scrum team can see uh, how they are doing in terms of uh, uh, quality. And I would say that the quality of the code uh, is, st and, uh, is still pretty high the rate of production defects is much less uh, than one could expect, though for this particular type of systems, you actually don't want any any uh, production defects, to be honest. So what were the main uh, takes away here? So the, this team was comprised mostly of guys with a development background, though there were uh, some testers uh, like uh, myself. Um, but uh, all the team members were really proficient uh, with uh, software design and with uh, code quality. And the teams were and feeling that they are the fellow developers and the developers tend to trust uh, other development. And when the job of your team to tell other people what to do, they need, you need to have authority, you need to have trust, you need to be good at what those uh, people are are doing, they need to really trust you. Uh, discipline in following the processes pays off. So yes, uh, the management was very committed to make sure that uh, everything that the team says, says is a role. 
uh, if we are holding off with particular, uh, with accepting particular story, uh, then, uh, well, it may, let, us, uh, let it be it until uh, our uh, comments are implemented, it will not go uh, anywhere. Uh, and it really paid off. Uh, and also, you see, the team was huge. It was kind of hundreds of people. And still, it was pretty agile. Either team's management believe it in agile, you can have an agile. Unfortunately, I don't have time uh, for uh, the last uh, of my uh, key studies. Uh, just very briefly, uh, we uh, here, the team was uh, only in charge of writing uh, the tools uh, for developers, uh, the frameworks, the infrastructure. Uh, and because in this huge project, uh, the UI was uh, standardized, there, are, there was an architecture team to make sure that all the feature teams are using the same tools and approaches. It was really possible to write common framework uh, by uh, means of very few people that can be used everywhere. But if you cannot control how developers are using it, if you don't have enough uh, people to do that, then while keeping task green, maintaining the task quality is a problem. And now let us talk a little bit, uh, finally, uh, how you can become a great uh, software engineering test, what it is important for you. Uh, so you need to have a passion for the clean, maintainable, high quality code. The code quality is the key uh, for our modern quality engineering. This is the essence. This is the, uh, the emphasis of the entire job to have the maintainable code that you can easily uh, implement, uh, implement new introduce new features uh, that you can add new developers and they understand uh, what's going on. Uh, you need to have a combination of developer and test, uh, testers mindset. So for, as a developer, you need to own your code and own the code of the team. You need to understand that you need to be able to fix everything. Everything You, can, you cannot say, oh, okay, this developer's business. You are the developer. You need to uh, take responsibility for, for everything that uh, teams develops. I mean, and feel like it's your job. Uh, from the, as a tester, you need to understand all the test types why they are needed, how to do them. Uh, you need to understand test design and you also have to have a passion for breaking things, for bug hunting and for debugging. Developers rarely fancy the debugging. You should fancy it if you are serious about becoming a, a good SAT. And you have to have really great soft skills because your job will be telling people what they need to do, how they need to do their job. Well, it's always pretty challenging. You need to have a really great authority to do that and quite some courage. Um, and so how you, where you get those skills, how you can learn to be a software engineer in test. Um, so I would say that you need to learn theory behind testing from the you need to first boost your testing skills, learn theory behind test design, uh, learn testing constants uh, like model-based testing, contract testing, stochastic uh, testing, session-based, exploratory, you name it. Uh, you need to read a real lot of books on testing, test design, test management, project management, about software development life cycle. Mm -hmm. You need uh, to have a mentor who can help you uh, with a test design and practicing all those skills about. Uh, how to boost your development skills? Well, again, read a lot. Uh, there is also a lot of uh, learning resources on the internet nowadays, a lot of courses. Uh, you participate in or need to participate in open source projects. Start small, uh, help fixing bugs, uh, writing documentation. You need to feel uh, what is the modern uh, software development and agile software development is about and uh, uh, doing it 
in the open source project is a really great uh, way. And it, it, it also always a good uh, point in your resume as well. Uh, and there is a plenty of uh, online courses. So just make sure you are doing the exercises, not just listening. Uh, and you need to find somebody who can help mentor you, review your code, provide help. Again, if you do uh, the open source, it will just come automatically because people will be reviewing your code before it comes uh, to production. They will be ready to help you. And here are the resources that I recommend uh, for you as a software engineering test there. Well, this is the books that I would recommend that I would read. Maybe you have many uh, others uh, in mind, but for me, the most essential clean code, design partners, refactorings, uh, one of those two about unit testing. You should master unit testing as a software engineering test. From test design per, uh, perspective, product, practitioner's guide to software test design uh, by Lee Copeland and how to break software, practical guide to software testing by Whitaker. It is pretty controversial. It's a little bit outdated, but it's insanely entertaining and interesting. The Whitaker is the Google, uh, the chief Google SET in the uh, 2000s, 2010s. Uh, from Agile perspective, it's very important to understand Agile uh, and Agile testing. So there is a book by Lisa Crispin about Agile testing. There is a book, Essential Scrum. Uh, it's not a, a immediately about testing, but you need to understand how uh, Agile uh, works to be a good Agile tester. Uh, DevOps is something every test uh, SAT has to deal with architecture, you will be writing the frameworks. And also you will be reviewing the code. You need to know how the thing works. Uh, and there are some ageless classics such as mythical man months about software uh, project management. Uh, it is more like a history book, but it's again very entertaining and um, a lot of lessons uh, that are still actual today. And the art of software testing is deemed to be ageless classic for any, every tester. I mean, in my years, any tester, the, the first book any tester reads first is the, the art of software testing. And finally, I really recommend you to use uh, some resources to practice your coding, to prepare for interviews such as code signal and uh, coding bed, but there is any, many more uh, on the market. And finally, uh, I'm sorry, always, already used 50 minutes, uh, but we have a couple of minutes for uh, questions and answers, I guess. Thanks, Mikhail. Um, guys, if you have any questions for Mikhail, uh, please put in the Q&A box. Uh, yeah, so uh, in uh, uh, my, uh, in our uh, LinkedIn, I will uh, provide uh, the link uh, to uh, this presentation if uh, nobody minds, would it be okay? Yes, absolutely, Mikhail. Okay, uh, oh. so, uh, so I will uh, do that. And sorry, I have too many slides and had to run really quick. Um, uh, so I, uh, I hope that uh, having this presentation available uh, will help. No, absolutely. Uh, it was, there were some great studies and great presentation, Miguel. So at this moment, I do not see any questions uh, being asked from the delegates. But guys, if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the LinkedIn group in that case. And uh, Miguel will be happy to respond to your questions there in the group. So, Indeed. all right, Miguel, I just got one quick question and I'll take this. So I have this question from Tom. And the question is, uh, how do you blend SDETs with the other test roles, manual testers, automation engineers? And another question to it is, how many SDETs per project? Okay, so, uh, wow. Uh, frankly, usually you, 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 you 
definitely can have a boss as it is in test engineers and manual testers in the uh, same project. But in this case, the SAT will be uh, will also uh, be a little bit uh, like a test lead or QA lead or uh, QA manager. Uh, so in this case, usually testers, the test engineers are writing automated tests uh, using uh, the tools uh, the software engineering tests uh, prepare uh, to relieve uh, developers from uh, that uh, hard uh, duty. Uh, and uh, also doing the test design, which is extremely important, uh, and uh, exploratory testing. So uh, those things. Uh, and you can also have uh, performance testers, but in many organizations, there is separate performance testing organization that uh, just delegates uh, their members to help uh, to uh, set up uh, performance testing. Uh, and SAT, again, it do doesn't even have to be uh, directly embedded in the team. Sometimes it can uh, just go to your project, set up, everything and just leave it back to the team.